Hi, my name is Hardy Rupan and I am the man in the wild. Last year, I did a video on a phenomena known as Jinga or night shrimp at the carcass point. If you haven't seen that video, check the link in the description. In today's episode, we are going to take a look at the problems and life-threatening dangers that involves night shrimping at the carcass point. Stay tuned for that. Please consider supporting our channel by clicking the subscribe button and the bell icon. The sun is setting upon the Ikakas coastline once again. Whenever you see such feeding frenzies on the coastline in the afternoon, you know it's going to be a good night fishing. In one of my previous video, I explained the phenomena that is called Jinga. It is the Ikakas night shrimp and how and when this occurs. If you haven't seen that video and would like to learn more about the Jinga, please check the link in the description. In this video, I'm going to show you what it's really like to catch Jinga at night, the dangers and problems that the fishermen and women face. The first of these problems is an abundance of seaweed that is sometimes entangled with the dangerous Portuguese man of war jellyfish. The Portuguese man of war jellyfish is one of the most dangerous and toxic jellyfish you can encounter. Its tentacles get tangled all through the seaweed, and even though it may not be visible, once you come into contact with it, it will give you a very nasty sting that can lead to seizures and even heart problems. Apart from the painful sting, the toxins in the jellyfish tentacles cut through the human skin, leaving serious scarring. The jellyfish bubble is not toxic. It is the easiest part of the jellyfish to see. It is the hidden tentacles that is most dangerous. The sun has set, and on the coastline, you can see groups of light that belongs to the various groups of fishermen. Let us check some of these groups and see what the catch is like. This looks very promising. There is quite a bit of shrimp here and not much seaweed. This is very good. These fishermen has luck on their side, but not everyone will be having the same experience. Some may catch a lot more seaweed than shrimp. Some may catch a balanced amount of seaweed and shrimp and some might just be lucky to catch more shrimp than seaweed. If you are enjoying this video, be sure to click that like button and don't forget to subscribe and even leave a comment. This group seems to be doing quite well. Let's check another group. Here we need a lot more man and woman power to get the net out of the ocean. There is quite a bit more seaweed, but there also seems to be a lot of creatures within the seaweed. Let's hope that it's shrimp. Oh yes, there is shrimp. I can see them crawling around.
glass of long air. Have a good feeling. Some of the pickers who collect the shrimp wear gloves on their hands. This is to prevent any man of war tentacles that is in the seaweed from stinging them. This is a male cigarette crab. You can tell from its narrow patch under its carapace. The catch is coming along nicely and there is still a lot of seaweed to sort through. If you are enjoying this video, be sure to click that like button and don't forget to subscribe and even leave a comment. This group seems to be doing quite well also. Let's check another group. This group has encountered a heavy amount of seaweed, but there is shrimp in between. They also seem to be doing quite well. But not everyone has the same luck. This group has encountered a lot more seaweed. And even though they have 10 or more men at the poles, they cannot budge the net. This group is visiting from central Trinidad. They are not familiar with the terrain of the Carcass coastline and they made the mistake of setting out too close to one of the underwater volcanoes. The Southwest Peninsula is dotted with mud volcanoes. Some of them can be found under the surf on the shoreline. And because they were very close to the volcano's opening, a lot of sludge in addition to seaweed got into the net and this anchored the net to the seabed. They were very fortunate that no one got stuck in the mud volcano. And they were also very fortunate they did not get caught in the outgoing current that was not very far from where they were. There are many dangers fishing in the Kaka surf at night and inexperienced fishermen should always seek the advice of the locals so they can be safe when they're practicing fishing at night. Apart from the man of war jellyfish, there are underwater mud volcanoes, heavy tide currents, and even sinkholes that seem to make the seabed vanish. Falling into any one of these can lead to loss of your equipment and life. At the Carcass Point, there are two independent currents that clash and head out to sea. The first current travels under the southwest peninsula from east to west along the south coast. The second current travels north to south which curves around the carcass point and clash with the east to west current. Depending on the tides and wind the currents will clash at different points and if you get caught you will be pulled out to sea. This and other events that take place around the point makes it very dangerous, especially for night fishing. Always check with the locals if you are not familiar with the area. Fortunately for this group, they did not get caught in the current and some of the locals came to the assistance. They showed them how to free the net and get the equipment back on shore. They were among the lucky ones. I have seen inexperienced fishermen 
end up in a lot of difficulties on this coastline. And even though there was lots of seaweed, there was very little shrimp. This goes to show, although it looks very simple to catch shrimp at the carcass point at night, it takes a lot of experience for you to be successful. If you are enjoying this video, be sure to click that like button and don't forget to subscribe and even leave a comment. Thank you very much. All good, all good. I walk in two hands, you know, and get wet this group of local fishermen knows exactly what to do. They have the experience and they were able to bring their net up successfully. But they are plagued with yet another problem that you find on Ikaka's point. The dead seaweed that washed up days before have started to gather flies. And as usual, all of the fishermen on this beach has to battle these flies while trying to catch their shrimp. You would encounter these in small quantities at first, but in a matter of moments, they would swarm towards your light, hitting you in the face, in the eyes, entering your nostrils and mouth. The only defense is to turn off your light and wait in the darkness until the swarm dissipates. My wife and I met up with this husband and wife team, Tara and Cheryl. They have been family friends with us for many years. Tara and Cheryl live in Ikakas. They earn their living by fishing and shrimping. This is a family team, and the shrimps they catch will not only make a meal for them, but it will also be sold to earn an income. If you are looking for Jenga to buy, Tara and Cheryl is the persons you are looking for. You will get it fresh out of the net. Let's see what they caught in this rod. Many hands make light work. And yes, I can see shrimp jumping in the seaweed. If you are enjoying this video, be sure to click that like button. And don't forget to subscribe and even leave a comment. Beautiful, fresh, delicious Jenga shrimp. This basket contains approximately 70 pounds of Jenga shrimp. It is emptied into the bag for easy transportation. The basket will be refilled with the shrimp they have now caught. Tara puts on her glove to start sorting this batch of seaweed. She will work with her team to sort this batch of seaweed. 
while Shero takes his team to make another drag with the net. Apart from all the dangers we discussed so far, there is another danger lurking in the waters. This area is known for an abundance of large stingrays that lay on the seabed. Stepping on one of these stingrays can lead to a very painful stab with its barb. If such an incident is to occur, your teammates will have to assist you out of the water. This is why it is good to have a very experienced team. As Tara and her team completes this batch of seaweed, another team of Ikakas fishermen pulls up alongside. And I can see a lot of shrimp moving within this batch of seaweed. If you are enjoying this video, be sure to click that like button. And don't forget to subscribe and even leave a comment. While these fishermen and women practice their trade, we see it is no easy task to be out on the Ikakas coastline at night, shrimping. If you decide to come down to Ikakas and catch some jenga, please be aware of all the dangers that exist down here, because most of the accidents that take place is usually with the inexperienced fishermen in the sea. I especially admire the fact that many of the young people take the time to come out at night and learn this trade. Especially these two young ladies who could have been at home on their phone on social media, instead uses the light from their phone to light their way to catch shrimp. This is the next generation of fisher folks that will be supplying us with shrimp in years to come. The seaweed spreads across the entire south coast of the Southwest Peninsula. Please consider supporting our channel by clicking the subscribe button and the bell icon.